Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin. That hello was Jill. <laughs> and that ever stoic gentleman <laughs> is Pedro. Really? Stoic? Me? <laughs> Yes. Out of everyone <laughs> in the podcast, I knew. Terribly so. <laughs> Not an emotion in his entire being. <laughs> and to get up with you. Watching us live on Twitch, listening to us after the fact. What's going on? So we are very much walking into the, we were talking about last week, the holiday times. The holiday time of tech. When everyone's <laughs> like, you know what? This can wait until next year. So you got to kind of take what you can get. But we do have enough for a show this week. What have we been up to, though? I know um, <laughs> I, I I straight up bought something because... I, I know This is not the first time you've heard this from me. I bought something because it came with something else and I needed the something else. And unfortunately, the <laughs> something else was like four times the price of what I could get the original... Thing with the accessories i'm talking about a digigram digigram v222 nice. v2 made in france from a place strider barely remembered <laughs> <laughs> i think his words were something i really don't deal with that region at all <laughs> so it's like okay <laughs> i think he might have went snowboarding there or something i don't i, I don't know <laughs> Yeah, it's near the Alps. Right. And uh, I, I'm sure like there's got to be somebody out there who collects things because I, I am like the randomly buy something, pay no attention, get it completely new in box. Which is interesting <laughs> because these were made between 2003 and 2007 when they made the PCI E version, not the PCI version. This thing had the new card smell when I plugged it in. Mm. everyone's familiar with that new card smell that something's oh, yeah. burning are you working or yeah. are you burning makes me nervous <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh like, all right it's never been used danger card but yeah i got the two cables that came with it which was the main reason but have no fear i'm absolutely bugging all the developers i'm like hear me out <laughs> so i'm having a problem i want to see if i can get it up and running i think it'll make a fun video and uh it's all going to balance on whether or not anybody wants to even tango with this thing anymore. But then I will bring up the argument, well, maybe this shouldn't be included in the also tools package then if it's no longer uh, operational. But outside of that, yeah, just digging around 18 year old mailing list post on the also user also def doing that thing I do for interfacing Linux because yeah. Like, it, it wouldn't be bad to have a comprehensive guide for something, because one of the cool things about Linux is being able to take advantage of things that are thoroughly discontinued on Windows and Mac and make use of it. So, I mean, it's perfectly serviceable audio interface. These things were not cheap back in the day. You know, we're talking twelve, thirteen hundred bucks. So, yeah. It might, might, might be fun to play around with. I'm not heartbroken, because I got my cables, but... You know, a little, little, little sad I didn't get my bonus soda on the side. I'm like, ah, oh, come on, I'm going to do a video about this thing because it's French. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the, those rare things that you plug in and it doesn't work on Linux. Huh. <laughs> Incorrect. Rare, yeah. Oh. oh. Incorrect. You plug it in. It gives you false hope under Linux. Oh, it lies to you. It, it's got, okay. Yeah, the modules, of course. You know, the V222 <laughs> modules, they load up and go into also hmm. mixer, and I pull that up. I'm like, oh, that's neat. And I, I go to start jack up, and it just dies in a spectacular fire. Like, uh uh, not going to happen. So then I found <laughs> out, okay, oh. I'm talking about this, but you know, I'm using a PCI card right now in an AM4 system. I'm using the Army Hammerfall HDSP9632. Then again, that's not a discontinued product. I know even in 2021, you can buy them brand new mm. before you can, because these aren't sound cards in the traditional sense. You know, there's a Xilinx FPGA on this thing too, that okay. has to have firmware loaded into it. So it can traffic cup and get all of its bits together, you know, because this thing does AES in and out multi-channel and, you know, it's got preamps and all this other stuff. 
that's what I can get loaded into the cart. With a hammer phone, I got the HDSP loader, and that loads the firmware and initializes. This one's got a thing called VX loader, which I'm like, hey, do your VX loading thing. And it's like, I don't see the card. Like, Brock system, there's the card. No, nah, can't see it. Doesn't exist. <laughs> then I run HDSP loader for the RME, and he's like, hey, I see this other card here, by the way. Just let you know why it's loading. <laughs> So this is my bug report. Uh, this is the issue that I've opened on the Elsa GitHub page, and uh, I've, I've like reached out to the mailing list. We'll, we'll see. This is going to be a fun adventure. That's how I'm looking at it. I'll keep it around. I got my cables. How about you, Jill? You got any new cables? Uh, <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> I bought a couple uh, new HDMI cables. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I'm, I've am i been having a fun time getting ready for the holidays. You know, Steve, husband, and I put up our tree and decorated it and uh, put all the lights on it. And uh, I'm so happy that this year we can see family and friends because now we, we aren't on lockdown. <laughs> so we can see our family and friends that are vaccinated. <laughs> so there we go. I like my version better. I'm just imagining that everyone has, you guys just have like this weird <laughs> blindfold party. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's totally your family. Right. All the furniture just gets wrecked. Oh. It's not not a good yeah. experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and as my Steve husband was pointing out, uh, the kitty cat does chew on our decorations. And in fact, one year our our, our young boy kitty Frodo bit a bulb and it exploded in his mouth. He was okay, and <laughs> we found the remnants. <laughs> And he had the advantages of being a cat, so it learned nothing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aw. Actually, he hasn't done that again, but he has attempted. And He's thought about we've it. stopped him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's new with you, Pedro? Yeah, over here. Speaking of PCI. Here's a, a motherboard with... A PCI slot and an AMD mm. Athlon 2 X3. Yes, it is a tri core Athlon, which. Uh, Don't have one of those on the show. I'd been. Yeah, no, I, I'd been watching this because it's a tri core Athlon for a while, and the seller was like, okay, uh, here you could just have it for like 20 pounds. Like, yeah, take the 20 pounds, give me. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, it is, uh, it's all working. Um, it only takes the DR2, so that's fine. But yeah, if you were on Discord, uh, yesterday, you will have seen mm -hmm. me asking about what the most powerful, uh, PCI video card is. So the interesting bit about this, give me a second, is <laughs> the IO shield that it comes with. It's 3D printed. <laughs> This oh is not my metal. Goodness. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, it's it's a bit more malleable than PLA, so they probably <laughs> yeah. use something else. But it is uh, straight up a three D printed IO shield. Huh. Very good use of a three D printer. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I think that's, it's actually might be easier to, to install it than the metal ones because sometimes the metal ones bend and they're hard to get in the corners, you know? You know what? Why, why don't you get some cardboard and trace it out and go organic, have an organic uh, oh. free range. Something, something electricity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, uh, I mean, if it catches on fire, it doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, this uh, at least provides that little degree of separation, even if it is just a teeny tiny little so bit of plastic. So that's an Athlon Tricor. Is that a flip chip? <laughs> I haven't taken the uh, the cooler off yet. Are you going to be that brave? Because I broke it. That I is, am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this, this was the interesting time back when uh, AMD... Uh, didn't have integrated heat spreaders so just had the die yeah. right on the top of the chip mm -hmm. and sometimes you wouldn't get them there's an old old 20 year old video of like and they didn't have thermal protection so you pop off the heat seek and they would just melt <laughs> you could just film it <laughs> <laughs> and i made one pop one time um not having the heat sink firmly on it almost got through a boot and you heard a Oh, because I had like four little nubs on it that you had to balance to get the heat sink on. And I had one that where I cracked the die with the heat sink. 
Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm saying there might be a coincidence with the two boxes that I have on the corner shelf over here <laughs> containing <laughs> one of each of those. But they were not tri core, that was a dual core and a um, quad core. I remember getting that first yeah, dual no, that, core going, what do we, how will we ever utilize such <laughs> computing power? Oh, what's that? You have 32 megs of RAM? Yeah, you're never going to have to upgrade ever again. It wasn't that bad. We had gigabytes mm. of RAM back then, but it was <laughs> like two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> two, yes. That was my first uh, Core 2 Duo uh, dual core processor was um, two gigs of RAM. Yeah, and I could play exactly. everything. Yeah. It's like, whoo, that's amazing. <laughs> You're never going to run out of anything. Like even these little butter robots that I use for these shows, they have eight gigs of RAM in it. But then again, the Raspberry Pi has eight gigs of RAM in it and it's doing even less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into it for this week. Starting with... <laughs> News I can't. Big companies doing shady things. Yeah. I'm still wrapping my mind around this one. I'm like, what, what do you expect <laughs> to happen here? And if you haven't been keeping up with it, this is the Vizio. Is it Vizio? Vizio, Vizio yes. I Vizio. think so. I've always heard Vizio. So, <laughs> so this, is gonna, this is from the SF um, Conservancy.org. All this is going to be in the show notes. So they, like big evil company, is going to do, and they've taken some source code. Uh, GPL license code, copy left license. And, uh, you know, part of that is you've made some, I'm working from it is any changes you make or anything like that. You have to give it up. Like, Hey, you if took, you're asked. Yeah. Yes. Somebody <laughs> wants it. They don't necessarily agree with the interpretation of what it says you have to do. <laughs> so they filed a request <laughs> to remove this case from California state court. Um, into U.S. federal court. And here's the thing. Vizio's filing, this is from the site, implies only copyright holders and no one else has the right to ask mm -hmm. for source code under the GPL. Okay. And the LGBL. Mm. What? Uh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> this, I, hmm. <laughs> Okay. It's like the, the concept Clueless. of copyleft was introduced specifically for that reason. That That's why those licenses exist. Okay. So I did a little digging around, playing around. I mean, like this lawsuit <laughs> is like historic, like kind of in its approach, man, because it, it's going to be focusing on consumer rights uh, confirmed by the copyright, copyleft license and the SFC filing as a third party beneficiary. So they're walking in, they're like, yo, this is like under the protection. You know, I had to go look up because everyone's familiar with the GPL, but you don't take a look at what copyleft licensing is. And it's pretty much a lot of the same thing falling with that. But all the SFC requires is that Visio, you got to make the code available to the public as per the license. Mm -hmm. Visio's mm -hmm. just like, nah, we, not us. <laughs> Come on. We should you. Chris is crazy talk. I mean, why would we do something like that? You know, utilize, draw financial benefit from all the hard work from everyone who's built on top of this code to get it to the point to where we want to yoink it. But come on, mm -hmm. come on. Not us, though, right? Yeah. We don't and have now to. Now people want to see the changes that we made? Nah, I can't have that. No, is, seriously, their claims are beyond nonsense. Well, I mean, throwing it out there saying that only the copyright holders, nobody else has the right to that source code. Yeah. They, where yeah. does it show, show me on the source doll where it says that? <laughs> show me where the copy left touched you. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, the license specifically allows you to request that access to the source code if the original application that you took was licensed via the GPL or LGPL or any of the multitude uh, other variants that exist. You have to provide that. If you don't, you're in breach and you're liable to get sued. Very good job, Software uh, Conservancy. Um, software Freedom Conservancy. There we go. Uh, and part of me just wants Vizio to release the sauce and shtafu. The other part of me wants them to fight this and lose to the point that it sets a 
brand new reminder to yes. all the other companies that might try to do this. Like, <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> like to fight this, you know, we've definitely seen companies in the past that were like, "Gay, we don't want." But at the end of the day, they would finally give it up. You know, they would fight you on it and mm -hmm. make ridiculous. BMW had a fun thing. Like if you wanted yes. the source code that they utilized, <laughs> they would mail you a DVD which they would <laughs> like six to eight months, but it will show up. And yeah. Uh, yeah, taking this to court to fight it. Like that's a bold move, Jill. That's yeah, definitely. Also because you know how many open source lawyers there are now? I mean, heck we even have a, have a uh, open source law track at scale because <laughs> it's, it's grown huge. <laughs> and, you know, shame on you, Vizio, for using BusyBox and FFmpeg and, and our beloved Linux and open source software and uh, not letting the public see the code. Shame on you. <laughs> you need to take a note from LG's WebOS. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they're not doing it anymore <laughs> yeah <laughs> i really got to think of 2021 the um rules for thee not for me defense good luck with that um, yeah it's like oh that doesn't apply to us uh, you you could only request it if you're a copyright holder yeah <laughs> yeah so, i won't be recommending in any tvs anymore to people from vizio that, that's it they 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 were always a good you know low cost alternative that had really you know progressive features but at a lower cost and no no more recommendations. <laughs> my my brain Vizio. just cannot process that. I I want to see how this yeah. can, this only concludes one way. I'm like, why are we wasting time and resources <laughs> getting to this? But hey, yeah, I'm to talk about like the new Blender 3.0 is out. Ooh. Yeah, so Blender, our favorite open source 3D and 2D computer graphics and animation program, just had a huge, I mean huge, 3.0 release. So big, I can't tell you all the, the major changes. <laughs> but anyways, one of the changes is that the Cycles GPU kernels now render two to eight times faster in rural world scenes. Oh gosh, that is just, that's amazing we we haven't had that big a jump in speed on rendering in a long time <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really huge and one of the things i noticed immediately is that the 3d viewport is much faster and much more responsive especially when you have lots of uh lots of objects that are high polygon uh that was significantly improved and there are shadow improvements on low polygon game models which makes the shadows more accurate and the shadow catcher has been actually completely rewritten include, and includes a pass to fully handle colored indirect light and emission. And there's even a new asset browser, which includes materials, objects, and world data blocks to keep your projects much more organized. And uh, to put it at the level that other of the proprietary 3D software um, animation packages offer. So that's really awesome and the geometry nodes modifier there are now around a hundred new nodes for interaction with curves text data instances and so much more like i said you you got to go to the page <laughs> go to the the website and look at the article on all the new features in blender i haven't even uh, scratched the surface <laughs> of what's there <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> It's yeah. kind of neat what's so, rolling on with it. Uh, I was playing around. Uh, 3.0 is going to remove the open seal rendering, but don't worry. Don't worry. It's 2021 yeah. and we're heading into 2022. <laughs> so if you're an AMD user, you can head out to the store and buy a brand new card with our DNA in it and you'll be good to go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, you can go buy an RDNA card and off the shelf right now. Easy peasy. No worries. Uh, and Linux support for the HIP is also in the works. I went and looked up some benchmarks with this because I was curious. I'm like, where does NVIDIA sit with AMD? What makes more sense? Because like, I'm like most of you. Mm -hmm. I use Blender with a loaded firearm is held to my head. And I <laughs> immediately eject everything I've learned until the next time that happens. This is about every two years. So I've run the, uh, we're all familiar with uh, the BMW benchmark. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, it's cycles. 
Hof. Yeah, like that. Hof. Um, yeah, the 3070 uh, outperforms the 6900 mm. XT. It uh, Blender Ooh. enjoys <laughs> some CUDA is what I'm seeing from this. You know, the 3090 is just murder rating everything. You don't mm. even see AMD show up until the 6900 XT. Yeah. Yeah. In between the 3060 Ti <laughs> and the 3070. That's bad. Yeah, well, effectively, the 6900 XT in Blenderland is effectively tied with the 3060 Ti. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's, uh, maybe that'll that, get better, though. No. It is an, It is actually improved from what it was a year or two ago. So that's, <laughs> it did improve yeah, a lot. A, <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, <laughs> NVIDIA has a lot of people and a lot of money to throw at other projects to make sure that the software integration with their hardware is up to snuff. AMD mm-hmm. does not. And if you've ever had the unfortunate uh, event that you had to use the proprietary AMD drivers or the ATI drivers back in the day on Linux, you know exactly oh, yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> their software is terabad. It is absolutely awful it's been getting better but yeah <laughs> it, yeah what are you talking about it works out of the box on cento 7.3 yeah I'm you still need the gimp help files though <laughs> yeah i i've used it on uh my uh maya rendering box and <laughs> under uh red hat <laughs> so and it works very well there <laughs> The one of the things a lot of people like to gloss over because you know, hey, it's fun. It's fun to say things about Nvidia, right? Come on, that's where this mm-hmm. poster comes from, and rightfully so. <laughs> one thing you can't say: Nvidia treats Linux desktop users like first-class citizens, and AMD, they're like, yeah, I think we got some Linux proprietary. Right? But, <laughs> oh, isn't the community doing that? Do we need to yeah, do anything? Yeah, really? Uh, I mean, we, yeah. we, we put some stuff in a Tardogy's head and put it out there. I mean, good luck with it. Is that the most terrifying thing or the quickest way to get somebody to nope out is to tell somebody with an AMD card, it's like, hey, you could install the binary drive. It's like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I got those feels too, man. I wouldn't want to tango with that. But, hey, I'm glad to see a new version of Blender on. Not as glad as I am to see a Podman <laughs> rapper. <laughs> this, one, this one's cool, though. To be fair, th- they are targeting this one for a very specific use case. And I do yes. mean very specific. Uh, this <laughs> is DistroBox, and it is, as Ven already said, it's a Podman rapper. And uh, not just a Podman rapper, it's a Podman rapper of a Podman rapper, uh, specifically Toolbox. And DistroBox basically boils down the ability to generate just different CH routes effectively or uh, different containerized CH routes um, for you to test various distros or for you to have access to a mutable file system uh, like uh, in a distro like uh, Fedora Silverblue or Kinoite or Endless OS or SteamOS. Yes, the new one, OS 3. Supposedly. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be immutable too. Uh, so if you want access to a file system within those distros that you can actually poke at and break things in, this makes that very, very easy. So yeah, go play with it. Uh, if you're stuck with a laptop that someone gave you that's running Endless OS or Silver Blue, go nuts. So, like, are you trying to tell me that this might be handy for wrecking a Linux distro before I wreck it for reals? <laughs> yes, because yeah, you get that's... to poke at the container as much as you like without affecting anything on the outside. <laughs> How about maybe... Sandboxing. Will this work with a WSL? <laughs> probably. It doesn't have any probably, graphical yeah. elements, so... I well, don't I, see why not. I, 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 I'm just saying so I, so I can do this and post the, sh- the screenshots and write it for Karma from my Windows device. <laughs> so I run all the distributions. <laughs> I mean, at that point, you could just make GNOME look like Windows 10 or 11 and put the default uh, wallpaper and you'll fool everyone anyway. So uh. I don't know. <laughs> I've I seen that there's a little bit of contention with Windows 11 putting the... Um, launcher in the middle which i've had on mm-hmm. xfc for 
20 plus years. <laughs> That's innovation. <laughs> really? I think it's more the changing of uh, something that people have been used to their whole lives, especially Windows users. If you've been using Windows starting from 95, mm -hmm. you probably always had that on the corner of the screen, not in the middle. So, yeah, it's, it's jarring. Well, I was listening to a podcast yeah. and I was completely just introduced to the concept of like, there is a very legitimate, like real thriving software market of companies that like move the taskbar back. Yo, yep. Classic <laughs> shell. It's been there since Windows 8. Uh, Windows 8. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Windows 8 was like, what? Like, <laughs> I, that I, was Microsoft's uh, first attempt. <laughs> here's the thing: I could fumble my way through. Like XP had that down; I had to deal with that. But everything else kind of followed along the same line, you know. There, mm -hmm. Or at least there was a classic yeah. mode you could throw it into, like get things. Windows, Windows seven, yeah, Windows eight yeah. with the tiles flipping around, trying to figure. No, uh, -uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And therefore, Microsoft's first introduction into the world of ARM and how they demonstrated time and time again that they can't, they just can't. <laughs> Come on, man, go get a window, get a WinRT tablet. I saw one on eBay the other day, but it was a little too expensive. They wanted like 200 pounds for yeah. an OG nope. Surface <laughs> RT, like the old, old ones, like, ah, no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> No way. <laughs> Jill, are you excited about the Podman future? Yeah, actually, this is one of the coolest uh, Podman wrappers I've ever seen. It's it's really, really good. And um, yeah, I think this is really going to be fun <laughs> in SteamOS. I'm not, see, the upcoming SteamOS 3, I'm going to definitely play with it in there. <laughs> SteamOS is going to be an interesting one. Um, yeah. Now, this next story we're going to talk about... Uh, I, I, speaking of containers, well, I, uh, <laughs> yes. my very, very basic brain beast is looking as like, this is useful somehow. You're just too dense to understand it. <laughs> oh, the, the, the usefulness here, uh, you can, uh, find it. Absolutely. It's uh, say you're only doing a one-off, um, because this is Exodus we're talking about. Let's give people some background. Uh, and uh, basically what you can do with Exodus is you use it to move a working application that you have on a working system and move it to another system. And it does that by basically recompiling everything with statically linked libraries of all the dependencies, except for the core ones. Um, and then you can just literally move the application to another box and it should run the exact same. And that's great. If for a one-off, that seems very, very useful. If you're just doing the one application that you need to get working, boom, there you go. Right up until the point that, um, <laughs> you know, uh, a massive ABI change in one of the core analytics libraries happens and all of a sudden it no longer works because none of the statically linked uh, libraries can find the ABI version that they were supposedly uh, going to use. So yeah, it is at that point, you're better off with the flat packs, for example. Yes, you're going to need more space because you're going to have to install the runtime containers. So that's going to be a lot, but it will also work around the ABI changes uh, because it will effectively have its own little sandbox with everything in it. <laughs> well, if yeah. you're already in the position where you can mix and match and move stuff between servers, you kind of do what you want to. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily servers. <laughs> they give that as an example, but uh, like... What is it? Uh, CentOS 6. Uh, say you have that installed on an old machine that's no longer being used for production, but you're mm -hmm. still using it for personal use and you want to put Google Chrome or, on it. It won't, out of the box, it won't work. So you use this and you exodus it to the CentOS machine. So this is the Why you'd want to do that, I don't know. It's not a very good example in the practicality sense, but that's the one they use. Well, here's <laughs> what I'm thinking about. It's like, how does this thing get, figure out, like when something's deep? Chrome, Chrome's pretty easy. Mm. Like uh, when it comes to, I'm thinking like, how would this handle moving 
Fusion or DaVinci Resolve from one system to the other. No. <laughs> Something that's got tendrils everywhere. Yeah, probably not too well. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. <laughs> and I, I'm just sitting back thinking like Chaos Monkey. I'm like, how do I break this? Let's yeah. See. <laughs> oh, that'd be well, kind of easy. Or use whatever <laughs> you use to cr- whatever application you use uh, Exodus on. Just use that to break the system that you're moving it to. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know the <laughs> Venom Fader. This actually reminded me of the days when I used to use Alien on Debian to convert Red Hat RPMs and Slackware TGZ <laughs> TGZs to Debs. That was a thing. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it, it didn't. But when it worked, oh, you were so happy. <laughs> See, I, I, I never got the to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, okay. I was definitely in that crowd of where I've, I I know I tried it one time. And like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like most people who grew up with Red Hat, then we later were on Fedora. We got really, really good at converting Ubuntu how-tos and guides because that, you know, with the Ubuntu's, with men, yeah. that's where the community was. That was the arch of our day, kids. Mm-hmm. That's where, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't have yeah, the arch absolutely. wiki or anything like that. So you get really good at like converting even in your head package names. You're like, oh, right, right. That's Oh, the lib that. on this one doesn't exist on Fedora. It's just called the name of the thing. And the lib is on <laughs> the other side on right. this one. It's like, Lib's okay. on the end. And that, <laughs> man, do you know how much of our air quote fragmentation will be solved if all the package maintainers got together at the core? Hello, me. Call them the same thing. Right. <laughs> Regardless of whatever file extension, just it. call them the same thing, please. That would make <laughs> guides, scripting, all this other stuff. It'd be very, very much easier. But that, no, that's not the Linux way of doing oh, it. You know, we didn't talk about the um, installing fonts. Jill, what were your thoughts on that? No. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you mean on the Linus Sebastian tech? I don't think anybody else has publicly been brave enough to say they've had a problem installing fonts. So yes, I know I haven't, I haven't had a, well, I've honestly never had a problem installing fonts because as long as you knew where the directory was, you needed to stick them in and have the permission. It was easy, but now it's even easier. Just drag and drop in most of the modern TEs. I don't even drag and drop. That seems like you're wasting energy. Just double, double click, click on, on the, the icon. And click install. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or right click on it. Sometimes there's the font install. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I was watching that. I just couldn't wrap my hand around it because I, I, I said on Saturday show, if you want to go back and watch it, the one time I was this close because I'm not a, somebody who screams at inanimate objects. I punch them. So, <laughs> so, um, I was I, I I felt what it felt like to want to scream at a monitor. Yeah, when, that was like you're so close. <laughs> click it. Come on. Yeah, just click. double click that. It's going to pop up the font manager and there's gonna be a big chunky install button right there. I install a lot of fonts. Yeah. By well, the that's yeah. the thing. You went at it the hardest possible way, uh, Luke, in this case, because Linus actually figured it out. He opened a folder, double clicked on the font. Oh, there's an install button cool luke on the other hand he found what the folder was <laughs> uh, it was the usr share fonts folder User, yeah he copied the folder in there and then it's, he went oh it's just called a font right you didn't even open the thing <laughs> come on man that, that, that just caused me to look at things sideways because i'm like why are you doing that for the system install it you put them in that you yeah. <laughs> not, not mint. to mention to, mint. <laughs> yeah i know and not to mention the easy drag and drop or right click install or double click there's even software in this in the software centers to install fonts <laughs> for I, those I, windows I, users <laughs> you do not lose any cool points if you were audibly screeching at whatever device you were watching the beginning of that i like I've kind of just blanked out the rest of the video. My brain just. <laughs> <laughs> this is the easiest thing, in, which I had to ask a very legitimate question: How do you install yeah. fonts on Windows? Yeah, you either open the folder or it's you double way. click on the thing and you click yeah. the install button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, it sounds like we got some Windows power users. Uh, now we just got some regular Windows users masquerading as 
power users, or is that what a power yes. user is these days? Have they, how the mighty have fallen further? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the, the, uh, the thing that actually got me and I realized just how long it had been since I had to manually create a shortcut to yeah. anything. It's like, um, Okay, uh, if I had I been that. sitting in that position, I probably would have taken longer than either two of them because I already have a lot of Linux stuff in my brain, so I already have a lot of bias. So it's like, oh God, how do I do the shortcuts? <laughs> okay, that, you jogged my memory on that because that got me interested, not interested enough to look, but I'm like, okay, so you, you're going to have your file manager, in my case it would be sooner, and you wanted to create a, shortcut to your desktop. Now, I, I come from a desktop that comparatively only recently introduced the concept of desktop icons, which I was very cross about. I'm like, <laughs> bloat, we don't need this. Um, I wouldn't know how to do that. No idea, but I assumed like, yeah, there's probably some control alt shift butterfly dry. And mm. Of course there was. If you're using uh, Whis uh, Whisker on XFCE4, you can just drag and drop and it'll just copy just the... Yeah, mm, it, no, it copies so like, the yeah. desktop onto the desktop, which just shows uh, up as a shortcut. File. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and then there's the whole thing about uh, archiving <laughs> to a zip file <laughs> when he, he didn't have the patience to wait for it to finish. <laughs> <laughs> he did that twice. <laughs> Wait a little bit. I, you have a fast computer, yes, but chill. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, yeah. give, you gotta give the Luke kid. See, the Luke kid is somebody I could work with because he at least did the thing. Like I'm going to open a terminal and type in top, which everybody's done. I'm like, are you doing something? You better. I told you yeah. to do a thing. Are you? I don't see lights <laughs> blinking. Uh, like, okay, you're doing a thing. All right, all right. I'll leave you alone. Finish doing your thing. As opposed to option number two, which was just, I'm just going to stupid away through this. I can, no. <laughs> Why isn't this working? Linux sucks. It was like copy a, a video to the um, the little external drive that they had, copy the file there, and then immediately try to open it before the copy is even done. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, VLC wouldn't open. And then when it did open, uh, when it went into full screen, it blanked out the screen. So uh, you eventually had to use MPV. So, yeah. That's what I use. Uh, <laughs> 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 wait, just wait for the thing you had. Uh, to be fair, uh, he has a big screen, like very big screen. And the notifications showed up on the corner above where the notification area is on KDE by default. And yeah, it's... He didn't see it twice. <laughs> okay, so well, KDE, all you need to do is implement eye tracking along with, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just always have the notification right on the corner of your eyes where it's visible. <laughs> you, you would think, like, if, if you're zipping up something, you're, uh, it, it's going to... Logically, you know, especially no a three gigabyte file. I don't care how yeah. fast your M.2 NVMe mm, uh, SSD is. Yeah. It's going to take at least 30 seconds. Chill. <laughs> you just inherently know that if you've computed at least once. So, yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> You're writing a file <laughs> that one gigabyte per second ish. <laughs> what are we going to say now? Oh, it's just that, you know, he they could have done a little bit of research to to use tar.gz instead. Just, you just know saying. what? I think they did, <laughs> but we're going to talk about that in the email section. Because we're yes. going to talk about Firefox 95. It's out. Yeah, this is exciting. So, yeah, the Mozilla Firefox 95 web browser has been released and it has some great improvements, including, and this is what's really cool, lower CPU usage and better security. And uh, the this, you know, Firefox 95 introduces a new sandboxing technology called RL Box. It puts orange arrows on my videos? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's no, to indicate that the picture-in-picture picture picture. buttons on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Van, I'm talking 
about the important new additions to this release. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Orange I'm arrows kidding, are I'm extremely kidding. important. Does it make my videos four by three too? <laughs> <laughs> How hard did they have to look to find one, though? That, that's the real yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the um, RL box uh, pre it actually prevents untrusted code and other security vulnerabilities from causing, quote, accidental, accidental defects as well as supply chain attacks. And RL Box helps harden Firefox against potential security vulnerabilities in third-party libraries. So it's really a major update, a major change. And also, site isolation is enabled to pr better protect users against side channel attacks, like the infamous Spectre vulnerability. And page loading performance has been improved by speculatively compiling JavaScript ahead of time. So, yes, makes it faster. <laughs> there are so many updates in this version, ah. <laughs> including picture-in-picture. Uh, picture. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the picture-in-picture, picture, the ability to move the little pop-up-y icon that shows up uh, in all the videos when they're playing, just move that to the other side. Nice. That should have been there from the start. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the... Um, the lowering of the CPU utilization, that one intrigues me because Firefox, and this is 100% reproducible, at least on my box, uh, no other browser does this, just Firefox. If I'm watching my animes on the Crunchyrolls, <laughs> uh, whenever it tries to load an ad and then fails miserably, Firefox would freeze the entire system for a second, a full second. You still get the audio, you can still hear that it, the video was still playing just fine. But it would freeze everything, like all the video, just mm. gone. <laughs> Why are you complaining? So, it gives you more time to look at the orange arrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I wonder if this fixes that. That that'll be something to try. Firefox ninety five when that shows up on the uh, KD neon r repos, I shall have yeah. a look. I'll download it and Definitely. install it, and I just. Do it the old-fashioned way because like, Debian's going to Debian with Firefox bad. It's like yeah. ESR. <laughs> so. Yeah, they, they do let you install the um, actual version now, but yeah, for the longest time, they didn't even let you have Firefox at all. You had to have uh, Pale Moon. The, uh, Pale Moon, <laughs> download yeah, it that's and right. Put it in your own directory and like launch it. <laughs> Just keep it updated uh, manually, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean... Firefox is great. I mean, it's good to have that alternative to something that's not Chromium-based, like everything yes, else. and that's open source. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that is... The last true independent <laughs> browser. Yes. Links? I mean... Links? <laughs> yeah, links. <laughs> Widely links. used, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was you could L -Y -N -X. use on Linux, man. Yeah, do you like... <laughs> Elinks, e L I N K S. Yeah, we, we had tab browsing like back in the nineties. We just opened a bunch of terminals up. It's like pretty neat. Yeah. Alt tab browsing. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna get into a slice of pie. We got one little bit before we do that. We want to thank each and every one of you who are supporting us over at Patreon.com. Mm -hmm. Ah, at Reed. Not really, because we're just thanking you. Like, hey man, that's kind of awesome. If you do join us, if you get you got some coin laying around. Got a couple of quarters a week to spare. We can put them to good use. One thing that uh, I like to do when the time allows, usually once a month, I got this out. It is currently up in Discord. Uh, if you are a patron, you can go check that out, but I'll post it on the Patreon page uh, when I do all this. This is a redemption arc. This is one of the good things about Linux. This is the DigiDesign 003R. It's the audio interface that I bought just out of curiosity because I'm like, hey, can we take advantage of these thousand dollar interfaces that people are having to throw away because they're no longer supported under windows at the time. It was windows 10, but doubly so on windows 11 and Mac OS is just gone on the um, M series completely now. And this mm -hmm. is just really good hardware that no one in the right mind would ever get rid of unless you're like, Oh, it just doesn't work my operating system anymore. 
So I bought this and I went to Zam Audio and I just read an article and said, hey, man, I've reverse engineered the drivers and they're good and just download them and install them. I'm like, fine, smash that buy button. I paid like 75 bucks on reverb that I used. Got it. Plug it in, get the drivers, start recording. I'm like, hey, this is, and it's like pops and clicks and <laughs> what? And of course, you know, I, I, I headed back over to the website that I got it from the drivers from the guy and like, Hey, this is really neat, but it's getting pops and clicks, you know? And I, it says, it's like, Oh yeah, that's a known issue that it, what it didn't finish with that. I completely left out of any documentation that it's like, so, so it doesn't work. <laughs> I go, oh. <laughs> it technically works the best kind of works. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, that was my origin story of interfacing Linux. I'm like, I'm, I'm one person, but I'm going to do, what I can do to get this stuff documented correctly and not just fire wire stuff, yeah. USB stuff, PCI, PCIe, everything I can. So you're helping me out with that. Thanks so much. But that is a preview. That'll be up um, for you guys. A little snack pick and go through it. See if I missed anything before we push it out to the masses, probably Friday, Friday or next Monday, depending if I got to do any extra work, but we have a new patron. We need to think this week. Yeah, Jim. Zin. Thank you, Zin, for becoming part of our Linux Gamecast family. We're so happy to have you. We've been enjoying uh, having you in chat, too. Now, see, Thank this is so something much. we can test <laughs> because Pedro tells us an interesting fact each and every week. And he doesn't. Everyone thinks he makes it up on the spot, and he doesn't. He researches. <laughs> he spends hours upon hours. So it will be a piece of cake to uh, just repeat um, the fact that you hit us with on Saturday night. I cannot for the life of me remember what that was. I can give you another fact, though, uh, because one of the uh, the things that I've noticed Zin uh, asking in uh, our Discord was, um, oh, people around here watch anime? It's like, yeah. <laughs> you're a new person, so clearly you haven't been around long enough to know that. But yeah, there's, uh, myself included, a bunch of weebs yes. in Discord. You can get <laughs> lost weebs. depending on, like, <laughs> Any given time in our Discord. <laughs> we have Discord uh, for if you're Twitch sub or if you're a patron, you can hop in there. That's where we're at the other six days a week. And we're actually in there. There's nothing. I mean, we have an active Discord. Is you know, nothing being posted at all. That that irritates me. It doesn't irritate me, but I, I see it from the other side as the, somebody who watches mm -hmm. other Discords. Because I back a couple mm -hmm. of people on Patreon. I'm like, there's something and I'm poking them with. Not a problem in our Discord. There's always some, but it is varied. You might get the anime stuff one minute, then what was the most recent, like sideways, like, what are we on about? Because this is my reaction <laughs> almost every morning. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, there was something this morning. I don't remember what it was, we but I, this one I know there was a lot of activity. <laughs> yeah, the, the, that's the one rule we have. It's like, uh, well, we have two rules. One is don't scroll up, and two is don't post something on Discord that will get us banned from Twitch. No. That's yes. There is that. The trick to like not scrolling up is you just turn the tablet in portrait. <laughs> <laughs> or use the search yeah. field, or if you got a mention... Take on the mention. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, also want to thank Don M for 16 month 14. See, I was giving you bonus points. Either way, 14 Aww. month resub on Twitch. We love you, Don M. Take around a few <laughs> names in the credits. Also, these two, uh, they head over to LinuxGameCast.com. If you're curious, we got mm -hmm. the patrons. We got a merch. We got the stores. We got PayPal donations. We got wish lists. Pedro and Jill, if you want to pick them up, something <laughs> I force them to read some. Whatever you send it as a message on the show, they don't have a choice. Jordan's got one as well. And I don't really have, I got one for the studio. So if you want to get really expensive stuff to improve the show, you can do that as well. But yes. I'll publicly show you unless otherwise. Uh, and that's really difficult because I have these chalk markers that you really got to like get working like an hour before. I think they're supposed to be used more regularly and, uh, yeah. Since there's only a name that shows up there occasionally, they congeal together. So they then dry out. They, it doesn't split. See, it's <laughs> cute because neither of these know any anything about chalk markers because that's not they work. They don't dry out, and you gotta. They, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's like no, chalk. I don't use those. <laughs> yeah, they, they, oh, they okay. Just get bound up together inside, and then you gotta split them apart. Just 
do the shake weight. Oh, dance. okay, then shake them. <laughs> kind of like you, you used to have to in, in well, the 60s like the and 70s. The, uh, liquid, well, if you've ever shaken a paint can, huh? yeah, each Relic marker, yeah. each individual marker has a weight in them that you have to mm. work out. Like the Poshkesh uh, acrylic pens that Nori has. Those are some really nice pens. <laughs> Once you get everything liquid, then you got to start playing around with like, is it working? Is it working? It It's not mm. a fun time is what I'm getting at. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> but it's worth it. So let's start this slice by, man, that looks like a, I, that looks like school pizza or something, doesn't it? That is yeah, just cheap that, pizza. That's a pizza pie. <laughs> that's a margarita pizza. <laughs> that that yeah. genuinely looks like some bread crust that somebody spray painted pizza. Yes, yeah. nothing on, on it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> just cheese. Yeah, it's just very little, uh, very little tomato sauce and very little cheese. It's you. <laughs> it just looks like bread. <laughs> Music machine multiplayer game. Yes, uh, the, mm-hmm. this was originally going to be a little art presentation, interactive art presentation that uh, people would gather around in the same room with those, um, what are they called? The Novation launch pads. Yeah. And MIDI controllers. as soon as you see the little dot, you'd press it. And everyone, whenever they press the dot, it makes a little sound note if they get it right. And if you have eight people playing... Then you have eight people putting notes up in the air. That's how you make the music. Of course, then, you know, the thing happened and everyone had to stay home. So a web version was created (laughs) that doesn't necessarily rely on a Raspberry Pi anymore. But yes, the original ones very much did in order to run the uh, Novation launch pads. That's 180 pounds Per launch pad, if you're wondering, for up to eight players, that's a lot of money. Uh, the, uh, yeah, you just run them off of a Raspberry Pi that was running the game software. And whenever the little server uh, said, okay, start, all the Raspberry Pis would start putting the little dots on the launch pads and people would hit and do the thing. <laughs> Yeah, so I was actually really happy to see a web-based one because I thought it might be kind of fun for us to play in the after shows in on Saturday of Linux Gamecast Weekly. <laughs> this would be a fun experiment. It might drive Vin up the wall, but... <laughs> does, does it have deathmatch? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is a collaborative thing. Very, very much yeah. a collaborative death thing. Deathmatch is collaborative. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but you're collaborating music- with your gun. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, the single person death match is a lonely experience, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> if, if you play towards the end of the, the video, the music starts making a bit more sense um, as the uh, more notes you know, are being pushed. So it actually does actually become hear music, music eventually. Coming yeah. from the different places. Yeah. That's music by committee. So it's it's really, really cool. And I thought it would be actually a lot of fun to play with this. <laughs> so if you have something that you think would be very cool and really fun to play with, um, we'd like you to tell us about it. <laughs> oh, yes. You can yeah. absolutely tell us about it. In fact, there were a couple of people that took us up on that author this week. Uh, <laughs> the best way to get in touch with us and the way that we're guaranteed to read your message is if you go to, well, Patreon, but also uh, <laughs> LinuxGameCast.com and the contact button. There's a form there you got to fill. Pick LWDW as the topic that you'd like your message to be directed to. And the fields are fairly self-explanatory. Um, what do I do the, about the send uh, button? It looks kind of shady. Yeah, click on it. <laughs> or you tap on it, because chances are you're probably using a touch device Spinning. right now. At least that's what the market oh, share no, says. no, no, no. See, now, now, now this guy wants my personal information, Pedro. There's a... Well, your email just needs to resolve, and you can just lie about your name. I, that's fine. <laughs> I need a way to communicate without email or the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. If you have uh, one that works is bob at bob.com. Uh, I'm pretty sure the person who created that email address uh, hates the internet because that seems to be (laughs) the default one that uh, people type in. All we're saying is try to be creative with it. If you don't have a burner email, we're not selling anything. This is all, this is set up so it doesn't go anywhere. This is all in the same box. 
And do keep that in mind. But if you're just going to type out something bogus for an email address, make sure it resolves. But you don't have to because it'll tell you. Like, hey, this is a bogus email address because we do have a spam <laughs> golem. Also, if you <laughs> would like us to, yeah, no, reply, you might want to work your way through that. And there's a regular email address on that page that you have to type out just to keep some of the spam bots away. Yeah. What do yep. we get this and, week? And uh, pay attention to the caveats. That's nope. That's all you need to do. This week, we have one, uh, well, asking about the Linus Linux challenge. <laughs> See, we were almost halfway through the show before I'm like, man, I need to yeah. drop some context clues for this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, this one's about uh, stirring internet drama. Not really sure why you'd think the Linux challenge series is designed to generate internet drama. Really? Have you been watching? Because at the end of the last video, Linus effectively said that that was the case. They were deliberately acting the way that they were because they were attempting to emulate the this uh, mystical uh, unicorn average user that they don't even seem to agree on what the average user is. <laughs> but yeah, he effectively said that, yes, they were very much playing the part so what <laughs> here's the thing here's I, now i gotta watch the end of the video because sometimes pedro's story, version yeah. is <laughs> that, that's that was like the last but talking that's bit what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> changes nothing with the fact i'm just saying for Fine. safety call me out on that too <laughs> He's still better. He's, he's, he's better about this Ubisoft thing. He didn't let it go. I didn't do anything. I, was, I didn't. It's like, uh, oh, okay. Ubisoft thing? Ubisoft Connect. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't even know that. See. They changed the name and I didn't remember that. <laughs> this is why it's pointless. Like, it's just a waste of time. People are like, oh, yeah. Very. Yeah, no, that, that, that again, that, that's on me. No I was cares. not aware that Ubisoft had change the name of the thing. <laughs> I was just trying to get through a story. So here's the thing. Um, designed to generate internet drama sounds bad. What you need to say is yeah. designed to generate engagement with the audience. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's a good. Way. Which is the same yeah. thing. Oh, it's the same thing, but it sounds better when I said it that way. <laughs> sounds more businessy. Yes. Business speak uh, is uh, meant to engagement. euphemize everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Linus was successful in that, and he's got lots of Linux users now watching his and videos. So he's increased his clicks, he's increased his viewership. Well, here's something I'll tell he, you it about. Was he's done very well. <laughs> here's the yeah. thing about the Linux audience. <laughs> They'll like you for a little bit. That's it. You see that with projects going in and out, in and out, in and out. And 90% yeah. of the people that are watching this are like, his audience catharsis they're, they're just they're <laughs> like yeah let dumb look at all the problems you're having and you know what those are the people who pay the bills so yeah you're not going to come out so get some magical experience everything works i mean there's some bias there inherently but again this is this entire se series script right meeting what the roi for that like that everything was planned out before they were like okay and on the mm -hmm. when show let's come that's when we'll introduce this on the spot, like <laughs> challenge, yeah. you don't make a multi million dollar company with that many employees structured as well as it is with just that doing is stuff actively expanding right. during this time period. Yeah, <laughs> so just, just be aware, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all, but just be aware. That's very good. What's going on behind the scenes <laughs> now? Yeah, let's talk about bits. Deutschland. Um, I am from Germany. <laughs> Also, this person you are? is from you Germany. This now? Yes. <laughs> Hi. Aww. Also, yes. Um, only one polit politician. Yeah, I know, but that's not what my brain wants to read. Politician. Yep. That's, nope. that's what he wrote. Politician. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I was going to go Titan, but like a little Titan. teaching politician <laughs> in Munich. Uh, decided to switch to Windows. I think there was uh, there was given too much. Were given too much money to the guy. Man, this is some Venn level. To the guy for switching back. Now we have a new government. Yep, Merkel, 
RIP. Well, not RIP, but and uh, hope that there will be more chances for free and open source software in the future. Yeah. Um, That's good to hear, hopefully. Bits. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. should be everywhere, though. I This is like the one, when it comes to transparency, is all governments should be running open source software for their own exactly. security. Yeah. On yeah. Top of, yeah like, <laughs> you know, you think about running a black box operating system like Windows or Mac OS, then working for, no, like, come on. Working with state secrets, <laughs> you know, the yeah. single highest, <laughs> single highest level of information, confidentiality, secrecy, whatever you want to call it, sensitivity, whatever. And you're relying on something that has demonstrably been proven to be flaky at best. Well, how many over the course of the history? <laughs> it just goes to show yeah. that everyone, <laughs> it doesn't matter what country you're in, everyone wants one of those that sweet government cheddar because you get one of those oh, yeah. actually doing good. <laughs> but how many times have you seen um, a zero day released? Well, I mean, sometimes they'll be responsible. Oh, yes, this remote access bug from windows that's 13 years old. And you're like, Oh, so some alphabet agency finally got done using that one and decided mm-hmm. to, um, <laughs> tell them about it. Yeah. Very, very, or, well, I mean, I don't know what the validity, this popped up. I didn't watch it, uh, on YouTube last night when I was getting ready to go to bed, but it seems like I'd heard this story before that Linus was uh, approached by the American security agency early on of like putting mm. some type of backdoor mechanism into Linux, the kernel itself. But I don't know. Yeah. Like go, go. Research. I remember that talk <laughs> where he was yeah, asked, I remember have, it too. have you ever been yeah. asked to uh, introduce something uh, less than legit by a uh, government organization? And Lina said, no. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> right and that that's them asking nicely because it's the government you're talking about like oh you want your business to fail mm-hmm. we can help mm-hmm. with that we're the government we will just uh scrutinize everything you do and cause you to close down for random uh you investigations just, for know, some reason the most frightening <laughs> sentence in the english language is i'm from the government and i'm here to help <laughs> Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> there's the security <laughs> issue, transparency, and then there's also cost. Look at how many, how much money our governments would save not having to buy all those Microsoft see, see, Jill, licenses hi, and hi, Jill, Jill. <laughs> I, I'm Microsoft. I, I, I'm your Microsoft rep. Let me inform you, like how many billions is going to cost to retrain, and you know what? Who's going to support that? Oh, You're going to have to hire new people run, to support. Yeah, and, who do I call? Like, <laughs> like you're, you're going to be on the hook yourself for any support issues. So yeah, yeah, you're just gonna, you need to just sign right here and just you know, let's renew this contract. Yeah. Okay. There or we go. you know, uh, do the switch and uh, like the city of Munich, failure of a case as it may be. Now uh, they proved five years in, they had already in the money that they saved by not paying the Microsoft licenses, they'd mm-hmm. already made the money back that they needed to retrain people to use Linux, the support that they needed, all of the mm-hmm. necessary changes that needed to happen at the time. And they, went they full made in. all they of made that money own, back in five years. Own distribution. This yeah, is easily. The, that, yeah. that experiment is a, why we can't have no, uh, nice things, but be a testament to the greed of humanity. <laughs> Money can get things accomplished, no matter how much work has been done. Bribe the right person, and all of a sudden, yeah, Microsoft is back on the menu. Uh-huh. Really? <laughs> on that upbeat holiday tale, we're going to bounce out. <laughs> <Yeah>. Jingle b- <laughs> No. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Here's some credits. <laughs> uh well i mean there is the like anybody capable of doing what's required i mean politicians are not the best and the brightest people man <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. they went into power because they knew how to talk that's it it's like saying you know you're dealing with judges a good lawyer making good money doesn't want to become a judge Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Why boy. would you? <laughs> right. Take the headache. Less money. Hmm. I mean, yeah. 
politics attracts the type of people who you would think. And this is universal throughout time. Aww. This is nothing new. Hey. 304. LWW. We'll see you next week. <laughs>